the headlines, medication or meditation. According to the Centers for Disease Control, more than 4 million American children are diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. Use of psychotropic medications in this population is controversial. To the contrary, takes a look at how Transcendental Meditation, or TM, can help some young people to cope with ADHD without medication. This may seem like your typical middle school classroom, but twice a day, everything comes to a stop. These students aren't napping, they're meditating. It gives us a break during class, so we don't have to, like, we have a break so we can rest and not continuing on with the pressure and stuff. It kind of makes me feel more relaxed and less mad and Angry. Say I had a bad morning I had, I get a lot of stuff off my mind. Zach, Kyler, and Hamid all have ADHD. They attend Kingsbury Day School in Washington, D.C., a school for children with language-based learning disabilities. Every day, classes at Kingsbury stop for two 10-minute transcendental meditation, or TM, sessions. Researchers are finding TM may do more than just relax the children. It may actually decrease disabling aspects of ADHD. You know, working with these kids, they're having difficulty concentrating and keeping their attention to start with and TM is the exact opposite it doesn't require that they focus or that they control the mind in any way so it's it's a perfect match for students with difficulty with ADHD or with attention concentration that kind of thing TM was first introduced to the US in the 1960s by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and made popular by celebrities including the Beatles 13-year-old Kyler explains how it works. They give you your personal mantra. You're not allowed to tell it out to anybody. And then after that, then you, you just, it just comes back in your head every time you close your eyes. Provide a sound that doesn't have an outside meaning, doesn't have a meaning that we can relate it to. So that it's a sound that particularly takes the mind inward. And then once the body, uh, the mind and the body experience that settledness, when the mind is settled, then the body becomes settled, and that's when changes start to take place. Get deep breaths, begin to throw off stress, but we also see from the research that it enlivens the brain, and that's unique about TM. Pairing a meditation known for silence with a disorder characterized by inattention, lack of focus, and impaired impulse control may not seem like a practical solution, but supporters say TM's effect on a child's biochemistry parallels ADHD medications without the side effects. Serena Grosswald, a TM specialist and expert in cognitive learning, has been researching this for several years. Fifteen percent of people who are on sleeping pills are children diagnosed with ADHD. And those sleeping medications are not, not uh, approved for children. They, there's some difficulty with mood swings as a side effect, and then these kids get put on antipsychotics or antidepressants. And then the next thing you know, these kids are on cocktails of drugs. After three months using TM, 53% of students reported feeling less anxious and depressed, and more than a quarter reported improved ability to focus. Some students also said their organizational and problem-solving skills improved. That silence that they're experiencing is having an effect on the development of their brain. Teachers and administrators say they notice a difference too. A lot of um, what has become a little bit of a, of a uh, question to kids if they're really having a difficult time managing in the classroom and they come into my office for example I might sit, ask them you know well did you meditate yet today you know some kids are a little resistant um, I think because it's so hard for them to quiet themselves and to sit um, for that period of time but what we see when we're working with the individual child is whatever it is that's the biggest impairment, the biggest obstacle for that child's growth and development is the thing that starts to change the most. So you might have a child that's withdrawn, for example. Then they do fine in school, they may even have good grades, but they start to get more sociable. Here at American University in Washington, D.C., scientists are tracking the biochemical effects of transcendental meditation on college students' brains and hoping it has the same impact as it does on younger students.
Neuroscientist Dr. Alaric Aranander has been researching the effects of meditation on brain development for more than 30 years. He's using an EEG machine to study changes in Irma Alba's brain waves while she meditates. So you can see within one or two seconds that the front of the brain and the back of the brain, that each area gets more coordinated, more integrated, and that the front and the back get coordinated with each other. So after just a few minutes of sitting quietly in meditation, we come back out with a more orderly brain. That means our thoughts, our behavior, our feelings are much more orderly and uplifted. Irma was 12 years old when she was diagnosed with ADHD. She says TM has allowed her to go off medication. It's more of a decision by me. It's just where I feel like I just don't really need it anymore. Like Irma, Josh Goulding was diagnosed with ADHD in grade school. People think it's overdiagnosed today, but I showed all the symptoms of it. And I can tell you from reading about it, being a psychology student, I would say I was, you know, pretty much your typical ADHD case. He believes TM cured his ADHD. I was on the medication up through junior, the spring of junior year, started TM. Within three months, I went back to do a checkup with my doctor, and he said he didn't think I had ADHD anymore. And I came off the medication within the next couple weeks and was fully adjusted within two or three months. None of the research has studied whether practicing TM can eliminate the need for ADHD medication, such as it did for Irma and Josh. But this hasn't stopped other schools from adopting similar programs. Some in the medical community, on the other hand, are a little more hesitant. I feel as long as parents really are treating their child appropriately and working with a mental health professional or a physician, um, they may want to seek out alternative therapies, but just to make sure that they're safe and that they are part of a total program for treatment. I thought it was like completely useless at first, but then it started to work. The evidence is in the, the children themselves. They do do it. They can do it. It's easy. They say themselves it's easy and they talk about how, how it makes them feel. And I think nothing speaks like the words of a children. So are America's children over medicated, Michelle Bernard? Oh, absolutely. I mean, my personal opinion is absolutely. I mean, kids on sleeping pills, you know, and one of the things that we know about ADHD is that the diagnosis is it's very subjective and there is a great possibility um, that too many people are being diagnosed with ADHD. I find this alternative type of therapy to be absolutely fascinating and to know that so much of it is going on here in the Washington metropolitan area. You know, the studies that are, I think, coming out of the Chelsea School which is a private school in Silver Spring, Kingsbury. Uh, in Let's not get too parochial. It, it, it's a it, national it, show. It, it's, it's, it's going on all but, over. But it's country. going all over. But I, I, I've got to say, you know, the studies are showing that these kids that are um, that are involved with uh, TM um, are showing uh, enhanced cognitive skills. They're able to focus. They're able to pay attention, and it lasts. Whereas when their ADHD medication wears off, they've got to start all over again, and you sort of see them stepping back. I mean, I think parents have to be careful uh, in making sure that. They do what's absolutely right for their kids, but I think this is fascinating. You know, I talked to Dr. Stixrud, who's one of the pioneers in this. He's a neuropsychologist, and he said that these children uh, that we saw in the package are on ADD medicine, and in fact, it would have been fairly difficult to get them to do the TM because these were kids with bona fide cases of ADD and very impulsive uh, problems with transitioning. And what he told me about was how those brain waves do change and what it takes away is the stress that stops these kids from being able to think before they act and he told me about one child in the study who he said what's the difference between before you did this and now that you've done the transcendental meditation he said well in the hall if someone bumped into me I just hit him <laughs> he said now what happens if someone bumps you in the hall he says well if someone bumps me in the hall I stop and think do I want to hit him <laughs> He doesn't, he doesn't say, um, Nyoko, Renge, Kyo, or something. Somebody else got a word in as well. <laughs> All I can say is, get me some TM. <laughs> no, I really do mean it. I think this, this has something to say to the entire society, and I'm fascinated enough about it to want to explore it further. Mm -hmm. I think that's the story, not simply of kids with, with AHDT, but to the massive AHDT right. in American society. Right.